Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're doing a painting based on Xenoblade Chronicles. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. With Xenoblade 3 coming out, I thought it was a good time to do a Xenoblade painting, also to play through Xenoblade Chronicles myself. So I actually went and picked up the definitive edition and I've been playing through it. I'm somewhere in chapter five and I've really been enjoying it. Just playing a little bit in the evenings, trying to get a little bit further because it is quite a long game. Um, so I asked my friend Emil, who's been asking me to do a Xenoblade painting basically since I started doing Malmakes, and I was like, what do you think I should paint? And he gave me an essay, and everywhere he suggested was really beautiful, and there were some areas I really loved, but um, I had just gotten to Bionis Leg in the game, and I just thought it was really cool. In a way, it reminded me of Dueling Peaks um, from Zelda, and I thought it would be fun to kind of do that same expansive, very pastoral landscape again, but with Xenoblade this time. So I've sketched out um, exactly what I want to do. And I'm starting kind of from like the opposite end where you enter. And I wanna have all of the, the big arches here because I really think they add to the piece. Now I have um, the Mechonis back here and I just kind of wanna make it soft where you can barely even tell it's there. And everything's going to have a lot of atmospheric perspective where some of these far away hills and mountains back here are very hard to kind of get any detail on and they're going to get less gray and more detailed in the foreground. So I need to start by doing the sky first, um, trying to just fill in some blues and whites and just different shades of that until I'm happy with it. Once it dries, I can start to draw in the very edges of where I want you to be able to see some of this. And after that dries, I can start to build some clouds on top to mask parts of it and make it even softer so you can barely tell it's even there. I mixed up a variety of blue-gray colors for my sky here. I'm going to have a bank of clouds here, which is why it's lighter, so later I'll get to that. And then down here I had mixed up a darker, grayer, phthalo blue mix for my clouds down on the horizon. And I wanted to um, bring in a little bit of cloud shape, adding some white on those while it was still wet, and it was really kind of making a mess because the paint I had painted so thickly, and I had also mixed Golden Open, which is a slow drying acrylic, into all of these colors, and it was still wet. So it was just kind of making a lighter version of itself here and not keeping any of the brush marks and cloud marks I was trying to make. So I took a paper towel and tried to dry and scoop up some of the paint on the highlight side of the clouds so I could mix more white on top of that and have a bigger effect to make these clouds. Now they're still not as bright as I want, they're very subtle here. So once this dries completely, which takes a while with this paint, I can start to bring in a little bit more highlights and a little bit more shape on these down here. So once I finish that, I can start to draw in everything else I want for the sky and fill that in on top and make that a bit softer using some of these same colors just to keep it very hard to see there in the background. Next up, I want to paint the Mechonis. Um, I'm going to be painting it basically a darker version of this gray blue I have here. And once it dries, I can add just a little bit of highlights onto it. That way it blends in really well and it still has that atmospheric perspective that it's going to be getting. And I didn't draw everything in up here because a lot of it's gonna get covered by like the arches for the, the land that swoops up and then the cloud bank that's going to come in across the face of it. So I just wanna give the hint of it. So I'm going to paint everything the darker gray blue, bring in a little bit of highlights here where the clouds don't cover. And then later, once I get to those clouds, cover up a lot of it here, and then um, just fill in the arch later that'll really cover up the rest of it.
So I'm using atmospheric perspective in this painting, and what that is is when you're standing somewhere and you can see really, really, really far away. The things that you're looking at that are super far away are going to be lighter in color and there's less detail on them because your eyes can only see so far, but also the atmosphere, depending on the weather, can kind of make things hazy and change the true color of what you're looking at. So this is an illusion in painting to make that same sort of thing happen. Each layer that I have is going to get more atmospheric perspective techniques to it to make it look further away. So I've done four different layers in this painting, and the first one I'm not even started on yet. That's the one that's currently going to be white canvas here. It's the stuff in the foreground, the stuff that's closest to us. There's gonna be an arch up here eventually that is part of layer one. So layer one is going to have the most detail. You might see like individual grasses or leaves or um, stones like on the arch as it goes up. I haven't quite decided yet because I haven't started it but that layer gets the most detail. It's also gonna have the most saturation and the biggest contrast range. What I mean by that is its darkest colors are gonna get all the way down into Mars black. And there won't be any Mars black in the background because those layers aren't going to get the darkest and the most um, contrast range. Layer two is this navy layer right here. So this navy is going to be the darkest color in this layer. It's not getting the Mars black, so its contrast is kind of getting crunched a little bit, especially on the dark end. Um, and it's also getting a bit grayer, a bit lighter, less saturation, less detail. Um, you know, you can't really see it yet because it's just the base layer blocked in, but there will be less stone texture on these pillars than on layer one, but there will be more texture on the stone pillar than on layer three back here. Layer three has a steel blue color as its base layer, so it's getting grayer and lighter and less saturated and less contrast than layer two. So these trees, you start to see kind of just, oh, there's an impression of a tree here or one right here. You can kind of see that this is a rock face but there's not a whole lot of detail to that stone. It's just kind of a lighter yellow color. So you get the impression that it's there, but it's not really painted that way. And layer four is even grayer with less saturation, less dark colors, more gray, less detail. And it's way back there. And it's just this vague impression that there's a fourth layer of ground back here. So that's how I'm accomplishing that. And I'm working on layer three right now. I blocked it in with a navy. And I'm going to work on the stone first because I want to make sure I have that right. And then I can start to work on some of the greenery like right here and then on top of the arches. But in between layers two and layers three, which is the one I'm blocked in and the one I'm done with, there's a row of trees. So I need to finish these trees first because they sit in between. I've mixed up a darker blue green color, which is kind of similar to the darkest one back here, but it's a little darker even because I'm getting into the foreground because that one's behind it. So I'm going to tap that in in all the shadow places and then work my way lighter into more light green yellows for the highlight parts of those trees. And then I can get started on my next layer.
I've been working on my layers and I'm working on the last layers or the first layers rocks and everything's been blocked in basically just solid Mars black. The areas where it's a bit lighter like down here is a wash of Mars black with some glazing liquid just so I could see a little bit of value in some of the spaces and I didn't lose like all of my lines on certain areas so they still existed basically. Um, for this layer I wanted to have the most detail and the most saturation and the most color everything with it. So instead of using a paintbrush to fill in the rocks like I did here and they're a bit softer, I'm going to be using my palette knife which gives a really good rock texture. I like this one because it has this tiny corner and then the longer side over here. So when I'm working on big areas like this, I can use the longer edge. And when I work on tiny areas like up here, I can use this tiny little edge to scrape on the different colors I'm using. Now I'm going to be starting with a Burnt Umber Mars Black mix because Burnt Umber by itself is still a bit lighter and more saturated than I want for some of the shadow areas. And I'm working in those first. So I've mixed it with some Mars Black to give myself basically a darker brown. And in some of these areas, I'm just going to set the knife down and kind of pull to give it a little bit of texture, scraping that paint on that area. On the areas that are highlighted, I'm going to keep working into lighter colors, maybe into some burnt sienna, which is a bit oranger, maybe into some Titan buff, which is a bit more sand colored, especially in the really bright highlight areas. And then I'll be done with all of these rocks. I've been working on the foreground rocks and I like how they look. Um, I just think that the one back here needs to be more blue because it ends where I still have some of the blue in the shadow. So I'm going to use some of that same phthalo blue red shade with glazing liquid so it's transparent and just go over the edge of this just to make it a little bit bluer in the shadow areas so it kind of pushes that leg back and then this one will kind of come forward visually because of the blue there. Thank you. 
So I think a lot of people know this specific location better as like Gar Plains based on the smash stage. Um, the song is called that from this area. But I was talking to my friend Emil, I was like, you know, what's actually the difference? Like, why is that such a point of contention? And he was like, well, you know, it's Bionis leg, but Gar Plains is actually like a mile in the other direction. He said it's still, you know, it works, but he said, you know, Bionis Leg is this part of the area. So um, that's why I was referring to it as that. Um, and I finished up all of the rocks, adding a little bit of blue to this one back here. It definitely helped push it back from this one and adding a little bit of blue under this archway and then on the left side of this here, behind this leg, really helped push that back there too. Um, so all the rocks are done. I started to block in a few trees here and then a few like fully trees with all the leaves on them. And now I just want to really finish this grass because it looks pretty good back here in the background, but I need to finish it as I get close to this area and fix up the parts that I wanted to along with like the edges along some of the rocks I painted. Um, and then after that, because I'll be able to fill in like the shadows for the trees, I'll be able to finish the trees themselves. So it's just kind of this greenery left, plus all of the stalactites up on this part of this arch, and then everything is going to be done. I finished the stalactites up here and I just used some of the same browns I had for the pillar and brought highlights on a couple of them that would catch the sun as it comes into this area. Now I have two things left and it's mainly just kind of this grass here. Once I get to about where this arch is, it's fine from there backwards, but kind of like from this area forwards, I wanna do a little bit more with it because it's kind of flat right now and it's, the transition between that and the stone below it isn't right. It's just the paint meets there and it doesn't have any intention to it. So I drew in where a few of my shadows are going to go and I'm going to start mixing up some saturated greens, a bit more green instead of the bluer greens that I had back here and fill in some of this so I have some definition for the grass. And that will kind of complete the transition between that and the stone here. And then after that, I can just fill in the canopy for the couple trees I have left over on this side. Now I had originally drawn in the mushroom things that stand here, but um, once I got to this point of the painting, I think it would attract and bring too much attention down to that space. So I like it kind of with the rock just ending the canvas there without just a few of those sticking up. I think that would just be too much. The same with bringing some water down here, which is what I had originally sketched. So I'm just going to fill in all of the darker colors and work my way into the lightest colors on some of these highlight areas and then finish the tree canopies over here.
Now, the last two things I had really done were the grass down here, and as I started to bring in some of the lighter yellow-green color, once I got to the foreground, I tried to bring in a little bit of actual grass texture, and it turned out really good. Um, there's just a little bit here, some darker ones in here, and I like how it looks. It's just enough to give it some texture instead of the smoothness of the stuff far away where you can't see the itty-bitty grass. I also finished like these few trees over here using the same sort of technique where I'm tapping it in like this one here, but you can see it gets a lot darker because it's in the foreground compared to these ones back here. So I'm really happy with all of that. I was not happy with this bank of rocks and the pillar here. The pillar back here I also didn't like, but I managed to make that look a little bit further back with some blue colors and make it match this one a little bit more. But this bank, bank of rocks and this pillar just didn't look good and I tried to fix them and change them a little bit and it just wasn't working. So I painted them Mars black and now that they're dry, I can go back over them with the palette knife in some of the browns and it'll look much better. Um, the ones down here I thought looked good so I'm gonna leave those alone. It was just this little bit that I have to fix. I matched my colors down here and filled in the pillar and then this cliff face here. So it matches this part down here, but I had started to go a little bit warm when I had done this leg. So I wanna bring a little bit of that there because the sun coming in is going to catch a little bit of this cliff face, a few of these, and then maybe just a few areas down here on this cliff face. So I've mixed up um, basically this color I have here with a little bit more um, yellow ochre to make it a bit more warm, sunshiny color. And I'm going to just scrape it on a couple of these just to lighten them up and make them look like they're catching the sun. And we're done! We have Bionis Leg from Xenoblade Chronicles. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.